My name is Daniel Omara. I'm an actor, stand-up comedian, script writer, creative director, and you know, philanthropist on a good day. And this is my story. Brokenness inspired me to join the creative industry. <laughs> I won't lie, at the time I, I really needed the money. Like, I was, I was not in a good place. I was sleeping in this hostel that had a graveyard behind it. I used to call it Walumbe. So I was scared to pee at night. It, it was, I was not in a good place at all. I wasn't happy. And people had been telling me all along, you know, you can do this, you can do that. You can do amazing things. You can pull this off. I've seen you, you seem like you can act. You're a funny guy, so try it out. I kept trying to audition for things and failing until eventually I landed one and here we are today. <laughs> From my experience, what it takes for you to be an actor, the first thing of course is dedication. A very serious amount of dedication and commitment because I'm not going to lie to you, you're not coming into this industry to waste people's time. You're coming in to learn, you're coming in to grow, you're coming in to build, you're coming in to create something beautiful, not to pass time. I tell people, don't come in to see if you can act. What are you saying? Speak a language I understand. That is not the way to treat a girl you're interested in. Some of the projects I've, I've featured in, of course we all remember the Airtel ad, <laughs> the fist with no head. My God, I hate it when people walk up to me with that line. But it was fun shooting it. But lo, you people of Kampala. Yes. Which lake is that that has fish that has no head? Then, um, Kalabanda ate my homework. An animation I did with creatures, animations, the Malinga brothers. Good morning, Mr. Okay. Then I did uh, Mela with Nana Kaga and Malaika Nyanzi. I did a movie called Plan B in 2013 with uh, Steve Ayeny. Of course, going back to the very, very first, the hostel, the one that uh, made me famous. Wait, 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 wait. I, I love you, it's just baby things. No, no, no. Why not baby or not? I am your woman. Yes, I understand you're my woman. Uh, right now, I'm currently working on uh, Prestige with Nathan Magola. I took the opportunity to play a more serious character, a more serious, more focused, completely unfunny. Because I think I'm at that point where I want people to gauge me by my acting, not necessarily my humor. Margot, the next thing to come out of your mouth had better be fruitful. I swear, I will rain heaven down on you so hard. Some of the achievements I've uh, had in the creative industry, um, I think the biggest one is travel. I've, I've traveled quite a bit. I was the first comedian to perform on Big Brother Africa live show. That was back in 2010. I think uh, the Airtel ad was ad of the year. I've had the pleasure of working with uh, Kansime, you know. Being her creative director is not a role I take lightly. <clears throat> Madam, are you also a student? Hmm? Some of the challenges I've faced in the industry, I think one of the biggest ones for me is of course, the letdowns. You're the face on TV, but someone's still being disrespectful, reminding you how replaceable you are constantly, yet you're doing your best work and making sacrifices. Then the mental breakdowns, the one that nobody talks about. All these are the challenges that we face. Payment, I don't dwell too much on it because, you know, your brand determines what you get paid. I think the government could do a lot to improve the film industry, right? And one of the things I would start with is they need to start taking the arts in general more seriously. There's so much we could do if we just improved the industry. The government needs to stop trying to stifle the industry and start trying to build it. Because the only time they actually try and build it is when they try and tell their own stories. They want to be very selective of the stories that are told. They want to dictate where it's going or how it is and then they're probably going to jump in when it starts being successful and the first thing they'll do is impose crazy taxes on things. So I'm saying first relax. Let the industry grow because this benefits all of us. You want a new tax base? Please help it 
kinder. You, 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 you don't get good grades from a malnourished kid. What I think needs to be done to reduce on foreign content on our local channels is we have to be more deliberate about it. Let us grow through the process. Let us accept that where we are right now is not where we need to be. Set goals for where we want to go and start working our way towards it. And slowly switch it up from having more international content to more local content. The better we get, the less international content we're going to need. What did you say? So my advice to myself from 10 years ago Young Umara, if you're watching this, by some coincidence, there's a time warp and, uh, you know, this happens to end up in the past. I want you to first put your emotions aside. A lot more work can be done through objectivity than feelings. And you don't get to the top by crying at the bottom. You wipe your tears, you climb. Yes, deal with your feelings, but not while at work. Handle them at home and then come back and do what needs to be done. And also, remember very, very importantly, greatness isn't achieved by whining. It's not to say you shouldn't talk about your issues, but be careful who you discuss it with, because not everybody wishes you the best.